the, the next speaker today is uh, Bjorn Sommer. He's with the Innovative Design Engineering uh, Group in the School of Design. And uh, this IDE is a joint effort uh, with the Royal College of Art and Imperial College London. Today I would like to talk about immersive design engineering. You can see here, I call it part two, because actually I talked about this already last year. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about the review. I say a few words about this on the next slides. So what was the last talk about? So basically I gave a short introduction to innovation design engineering. I talked about um, virtual reality at the Royal College of Art. And um, I gave a small number of examples in the context of immersive design engineering um, with a focus on large scale exploration, multi stereoscopic displays and mobile IR navigation. <clears throat> you can see here some examples of that. Um, but uh, today we want to take it further because we basically, based on what we presented last year, we wrote a review um, over a couple of months and uh, I would like to give you an overview of what are our outcome uh, of this review. So first of all, we looked into the term design engineering and uh, took a definition from the uh, McGraw-Hill Dictionary, uh, which is a branch of engineering concerned with the creation and of systems, devices, and processes useful and sought by the society. So that's basically the, the um, definition which we took into account and took it then further um, to the definition of immersive design engineering. Um, the only thing which is left from the last presentation is this quantification here, because I thought it's quite interesting to see um, what are the different um, engineers' um, um, tasks, what they are doing, and how do they devote their time to it. So you see here that technical work is very important, but also social work is a very important factor, of, obviously. And as we already expected, 50% of the time is devoted on front of the computer. These are very interesting uh, aspects. So if you're interested in this, have a look to this paper here from Mark Robinson. Of course, we don't have much time. I want to continue. And we want to look now into the definition of immersive design engineering, which me and my colleagues came up with. So this is um, the small paragraph which we wrote. So I will shortly go through it. So first we say it's a branch of engineering concerned with the creation of systems, devices, and processes. So these terms are based on the definition of design engineering, which I mentioned before, useful to and sought by society immersing the actor by making use of new immerse, immersion supporting technologies. So this might be Oculus Rift, it might be a cave, and so on. We will talk a little bit about this later on. <clears throat> um, this definition includes, but is not limited to software systems, hardware devices, as well as production processes. So this is basically the focus, but it can go beyond these areas. Um, then immersive design engineering applies to the creation process of operated hardware devices, as well as their usage in associated systems and processes. So that's basically means on one hand, if yeah, you know that for example, the Oculus Quest has a long history, a long interesting history, and uh, the whole creation process uh, can be seen as immersive design engineering, but actually you can use also the Oculus Quest in the context of new immersive design engineering work. For example, if you want to create a new architecture, you can use Oculus Rift to explore this. Therefore, all products of ID might be temporarily or permanently components of a circular process. So this is again, this kind of circular relationship in a way. So that's basically you can recycle objects which were created by IDE um, and uh, use it for the creation of new um, devices, for example. To achieve an appropriate level of the actor's immersion, a task programmatic selection of involved senses has to be made. This basically means that um, on one hand, of course, you will, I think, always take uh, the visual cues into account, but then of course also sound, haptics. So there are a lot of different senses that you know which you can take into account. But um, uh, in the end, so even taste might be something, but in the end, because we talk about design engineering, as this might be very interesting for virtual reality, uh, um, in the context of virtual reality, but maybe not so much for design engineering to think about taste. So let's look what we did also in the context of our work. So we made a categorization. So this here is a comparison table which we set up. So you find in the publication, which is linked here, you find the link to this uh, overview table. So we had a number of um, around um, uh, 40 different uh, um, works which, which we took into account. 
And uh, this we basically categorized. So the sections are categories, groups, hardware, paper project type, immersion, and definition. Let's have a look to this. So this is here the overview of the complete table. <clears throat> if you look here to the right side, just for your information, so this is basically the priority. So if we wrote here for devices, priority two, this is a higher priority um, among systems here for this particular paper. Um, so let's have a look to the categories. I just selected here the top five ones <clears throat> based on the papers which we took into account. Um, so here we see an example which unites visualization as well as gamification. So this is uh, an interesting word from the biomolecular area. Um, so you see here that in this way, a virtual reality was used to, to visualize and model a membrane. And you have this um, simple idea of a, automata which you can use to play with with this membrane and change the configurations so this here is a quite important work iatk from my former colleague from um, from monash university uh, maxim corday and his colleagues so that's a quite interesting way to visualize abstract data so you can see that if you have a little bit background information visualization we can we'll see here uh, familiar terms like uh, brushing uh, for example, and this we can actually use to explore complex data sets in uh, three dimensions and then select different portions of this data set and then explore them, what you can see here on the right side. So here you select it uh, in the graph view and here you explore then um, the, the different aspects of the scatter plot. Then we also make the categorization into different groups. This was some work we, which, uh, we once published also at the SDNA conference. So here we used a large display environment, uh, the Cave 2. And the interesting thing was here that you had a navigator in the center who could, could communicate with different people in, in, this, in this room here and uh, navigate the 3D environment so that the, the rest of the group were able to observe um, the virtual environment. Um, then in terms of hardware, um, we had here um, a lot of work was on the Oculus Rift, uh, a few on HTC Vive, and of course also on the Cave. Um, I uh, basically to, uh, put here an image from the Vario. This is a Vario XR1 uh, one, um, that was a prototype still. And uh, I think it was uh, Andrew and me who had the pleasure to test it. And probably, well, probably all people who are here today and were at the conference last year also tested. This is a very nice device. And actually, now you can buy the XR number three. So, and uh, it's more affordable than the, the prototype one. So it's uh, can, could be very interesting. It's an AR device. I want to mention this here also because um, that is intuitive surgical. So this is a device which you can use. It's a commercial project. It's a device which you can use for surgeries. Um, so John Stern could tell you a lot about that, for example, um, because he was working for this company some time ago. And uh, this is, of course, a very important uh, platform. And you can see that while whereas the other um, previous um, topics were more about from the research area, this one is more a topic um, from a commercial area. Um, then in terms of immersion, I would like to mention Gravity Sketch, which is indeed a project which was established by former students from the IDE program. So this is a very nice tool if you want to um, model, for example, 3D meshes in 3D. It's, for example, used for uh, designing shoes, for example, or in the automotives. So it's a very interesting tool which you can use with uh, Oculus, for example. So and then following the, the definitions on design engineering, you might remember this three terms, systems, devices, and processes. So here you can see the numbers to which extent um, the different papers were uh, assigned to these different terms. Let's come to the research questions. We uh, come up with a number of research questions. I just want to mention a few here. You can find more in the paper. So what, for example, how can we improve the usage of web technology in combination with immersive devices? So for example, probably people who know me know that I really much like the Z-Space, which was already able to use web technology in combination with this semi-immersive VR um, some years ago. Um, but actually, yeah, it's quite hard to bring this really to a broader usage. And this is, I think, something which is really interesting. How can you work with this? How can we integrate and visualize sensor data such as temperature or pressure, air pressure, 
into immersive DE applications? Um, how do we optimize ID in terms of different user scenarios? So that, for example, if you have different user groups, how can you um, optimize a, a particular application, for example, so that a number of different users can um, can make use of that? Um, other research questions. So view-centered S3D optimization, a general problem of immersive solutions. How can we improve the stereoscopic vision and perception and optimize it for individual, individuals or larger audiences? I also did a little bit work about this. I will mention this in my upcoming talk in the next session. And um, the next thing, scene-centered S3D optimization, how can we optimize a virtual scene or environment to provide an optimal configuration in terms of S3D visualization? And this is a very in interesting talk here. Um, um, from Man Leo uh, Scalabrin. Um, so what he basically did here, he used Blender and he used an approach um, how to optimize the location of different buildings and the structure of different buildings in a way so that it's optimized if you are looking to, to the stereoscopic camera thrust. Um, so that's a quite interesting talk you see. Uh, it's linked here. So actually I think David Gardia, who was also once part of the SDNA, a committee. I think he was uh, the lead also on that. So let's come to the conclusions. We have a number of different definitions in the context of immersive design engineering. So we summed them up and, and presented them in this paper. So please have a look to that. We came up with a new categorization. So um, please have a look at these different categories. And also we want to extend this in the future. An important thing that I have to say in this context is of course, that this is not a, a completely comprehensive review, so it was a selection of different works in this research agenda. Um, we came up with the initial research agenda. As I said, there are a lot of more different um, research questions in our paper. More from the paper, uh, also the comparison table you will find there in the link. Uh, more from the paper is we discussed there how you basically take a, a student project and start to make a company from that. So we had one of our, our alumni actually did this. And we have a discussion of disruptive display design there and cognitive interaction. Well, that's a quite interesting thing. So please have a look to the paper if you're interested in this. And that's the other thing, immersion does not equals virtual reality. It's maybe something which is clear for everybody here, but maybe not for the general audience. It's also something which is discussed there. I come to the end. So acknowledgements are my co-authors, Chang, Ned, and Savina. They were involved in writing this paper. And also thanks go to our internal research cost funds. And with this, I'm finished. You, you see on the right side also a number of universities which are were involved in my former projects. And uh, thanks a lot, Greg, for having me here.